It's the National Football. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started. And off we go from Cleveland. Naheem Hines now out of his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out, a first-round pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, former Clemson Tiger, Deshaun Watson. And he makes it so difficult for all defenses because when he's got the ball, it's hard to say when a play is truly over because he can create from any spot on the field and in any situation even when it appears that he's contained. When he's running your offense, a big play could arrive from any possible spot. First play from scrimmage, Watson gonna throw it. This short pass into the hands of the Joku. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up those downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Chubb going to push forward and pick up a Browns first down as the tackle made up near the 35. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They run again on first down, Chubb, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. They go with Chubb on second down. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Two straight four-yard runs, and it is steadily working the ball downfield. To me, they're staying right on schedule. First down, you want four yards or more to set up the rest of the drive. They're getting exactly that. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Watson. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, on is Colby Wadman now to punt. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And bringing them out is the rare southpaw in his fourth year, coming off his best season as a pro to a tongue of Iloa. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there, but for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and allows him to make some special plays out there. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Offense looked a little bit discouraged out there. Play shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Oh, the motion comes too late. And this is going to be a delay. Delay of game. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still second down. Second down, here's Mostert again. 
And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Tyreek Hill. And on the way in for the Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill taking it in. And the Dolphins get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they called his number in this one. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return, it's Naheem Hines. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now a first down throw, Watson. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Throwing again is Watson. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Now Watson. That is caught. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Watson on first down. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. <laughs> and I feel a little bit like a traitor as a former defender because that big man did not want to go down and refused to go down. If you're a defender and you'll get the right angle on a big tight end like him, he can run right through you like you're not even there. And he did a lot of that on that play. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and five. Again, it's Watson. That's complete to the running back, Naheem Hines. Seven yards there and a first down. 
Well, he's certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. On first down, it's Watson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Flying in to pick up that sack, Jordan Brooks. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. A sizable gain there, nine yards as they get it back to a third and five. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. To throw is Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Sometimes when you run a screen pass down in the red zone, it's really tough to create a lot of room to operate. The field's pretty condensed, but that was really well designed there, and they're able to pick up a first down. This is Hines. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field of the grand game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. They give him two yards there as they'll set up now with a first and goal. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. Chubb is into the end zone for Browns touchdown. Finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL. A complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. Fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now. But this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. A nice gain of 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. 
The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Out of the gun is a give to HM. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down per minute and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. Back deep, Naheem Hines. Looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Second down, here's Chubb again. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. The Browns on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Here's Watson. That pass complete to Moore. There he goes. Elijah Moore. And finally taken down at the 15. A huge play there on the screen pass. 64 yards. Those wide receiver screens like that, isn't that what they said they wanted to implement more in the game plan this week? They certainly did because they felt like they had an advantage with their receivers out in open space. They thought they could make the first guy miss like a punt returner and then pick up nice blocking downfield. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Watson now going to run the option right. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Different story this time around. We had that huge gain followed by a sizable loss here. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper. Pulling a gain of three on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Backed up here. Tough spot. Needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing on third down. Watson. He's got Njoku over the middle. Touchdown, Browns! Deshaun Watson on target to David Njoku. And the Browns have taken the lead. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown.
Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That time, a six-play drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. He's done his part, but so far it's been in a losing effort, so they've got to fix something. But that doesn't mean changing anything, the way they're throwing the ball around and his catches and production. Keep doing that. They're going to have to fix some things likely on defense to try and slow down their opponents. But so far, he's north of 100 yards receiving. They'll start on the ground with Mostert, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Waddle's first catch, good for a first down. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off, sometimes you're just rounding it, sometimes there's a fake, sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. To his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Ten more there and another first down. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing now is Tugamailoa. Out route to Hill, complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35 yard line. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. He's in the space past the 25, and he's finally down at the 21-yard line. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Two and now on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Off of play action. Tongue of Iloa. Sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Well, every point 
play certainly counts at this stage of the game. But after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. The kick by Sanders is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And no thought of a return here for Hines. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half. That's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. On first down, Watson. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now it's Watson. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Third and two. From the gun, here's Watson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. You often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Watson looks to throw again. Right back to Njoku. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this. Back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. Second down and four. Now Watson. This will be caught. Judy. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Back to throw, Watson. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Throwing again is Watson. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. 
That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're gonna spin the dial now in their playbook and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Again, it's Watson. To the sideline and incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. A 50-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a solid first half out of the workhorse Nick Chubb. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Touchdown is the difference, 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six during a second down. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delayed game. Awesome. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. Tua wants to throw it on second down. The swing throw underneath to Achan. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him the football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Two are going to throw. Incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. 
It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. So one quick, easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. Tough one there. First drive in the third quarter, third interception, and now a chance that they could be an even bigger hole if they can convert this into points. Yeah, but how good do you feel if you're that defensive coordinator right now? Because you just know that the head coach looked at him and said, turn him loose, big man. And he'd be able to take a few extra chances playing with this type of a lead. And boy, it paid off. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. From the 31, here's a second down and nine. Watson now to throw. David Njoku with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Hopkins with the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga by Loa. They'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. 
A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On second down, Tua. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. Only able to gain a couple there. And now it's third and three. That was an okay hook up there with this tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 46 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Tua. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins have cut it back within a score. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that cuts the lead to 24-7. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Hines opting not to risk it, and this will come out to the 25. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. They begin this drive with Chubb. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. And again, it's Chubb. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Third and four. Here's Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. 
shreds the tackle. Nice. And he is going to have the Browns first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. And running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Javon Holland coming up to make the stop. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The offense on third down, they've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. Here it's third and three to throw is Watson. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards on the play there. It's a drive will continue. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. From the 50, it's Watson. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Now they return to the ground game, Chubb. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. A shotgun snap for Watson. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It's a gain of 35. Well, Barter, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. To the air yet again, Watson. And he'll find Aikens there, complete. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that will bring up second down. Now it's Hines. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They got five through the air last play. Now five on the ground. First and ten. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscle all over the field and getting pushed down. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Now it's Watson, a bootleg to the end zone, but it's incomplete. A lot 
lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Here's Watson. Flush to his right. And he'll take it into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. Deshaun Watson, a three-yard touchdown. And the Browns have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Dolphins offense returning to the field. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Two and now on first down. On target over the middle of the hill. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. Throw caught by Achan. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Meanwhile, two is throw complete there to Smith. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, they can put him in a number of different places, in line, H-back, put him in the slot. In this case, they put him out wide. Matchup nightmare. Who are you going to send out to cover him? And he picks up a first down with that catch. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 46. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Two and a throw again. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time, make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outta boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Here now, second and goal. Throwing now is Chugabailoa. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. 
Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told him, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. This crowd doing all they can. Here's third and goal. Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. And he had a reach for that one, but can't grab it. It's behind him, and it's incomplete. So now fourth and goal. You're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Tua. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return is Hines. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock defensively. They have three timeouts, so do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit, and you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, You've got another thing coming. Yeah, and by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb, and he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now Watson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. go left side on the ground with Chubb and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play but they did get one final chance to try to score and overcome this small deficit. No touchdown, though, Charles. And that brings this one to a close. Yeah, I think Hope was wearing one jersey and Worry was wearing another on the other sideline as that final snap played out. 
Now, we've seen some incredible plays to win games before, but in this case, I think the distance was just a little bit too great for it to happen here. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.